Hello, everybody. If you can see me in the bottom right corner of your screen, my name is Corwin Thompson. I am the lead marketing specialist here at the Monogram Design Center in Chicago. Um, I'm going to give just a brief overview um, before I hand it over to Rebecca and Mark, who are going to speak to how we design with wellness in mind, which is um, a, a passion of mine and I'm sure many other people's on this call. So I'm so excited to hear what they have to say. Um, and if you joined us yesterday, this might be a little bit repetitive, so sorry about that, but hopefully a little bit of new information for those of you who are joining us for the first time this week. Um, first, thank you so much for joining us in our final week of the Monogram Table Talks. As I mentioned yesterday, it's very bittersweet as we've enjoyed every single one of them, but we're so excited to announce that the Monogram Design Center in Chicago is now open. As you can see, I'm here today. Um, so we wanted to sort of keep you all posted and what we are offering currently. So um, we have been and still will be um, offering virtual product consultations. We can walk you through any of our products at the Design Center virtually from the comfort of your own home. We also, now that we're open, can offer you in-person product consultations. Um, and we are here for you throughout the entire journey from product selection to installation and even beyond into ownership. Um, and this brings me to my next point. Um, we also have our executive chef, John Liddell, um, here available to host um, virtual or in-person chef conversations and demonstrations. So maybe you're exploring which appliances are the best fits for you, or maybe you own monogram appliances already and you're not sure how to get the full functionality out of them. Chef John is here to really show you how to be a home chef and use these appliances. So um, you will see a an email on the screen, the MDC Chai at geappliances.com. If you would like to take advantage of any of these services, please shoot us an email um, and we'll be happy to get back to you and, and schedule something for you. So really, really exciting. And the beauty of this whole virtual world is that um, we can be with you anywhere all across the country um, virtually through these virtual appointments. So um, that's definitely an option. That being said, if you'd like to see something in person and you are not local to Chicago, you can also contact us and we can connect you with a monogram um, sales manager or a designer engagement leader in your market where they can show you display monogram displays at their local resellers all around the country as well. Okay, now as we get on to sort of the nitty gritty of the team's platform, a lot a lot of times this is new for many people, so we just kind of like to go through your toolbar. Um, so in the middle, sort of towards the bottom, you're going to see a toolbar. You're going to see your video icon. So if you'd like, feel free to turn your camera on if you'd like to join us in person. Um, but we get it if you don't want to. Um, to the right of that is your microphone. So we will have everybody muted in the beginning just because we can get some feedback if a lot of people aren't muted. But if you have a question or comment, please feel free to unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you. Um, there are a couple of other options though. To the right of that is the raise your hand feature. If you have a question, you don't know when is the right time to ask, feel free to raise your hand and we will see that in the participants list and we can call on you then. Um, if you want some, the easiest way really is to go into the chat box, which is to the right of the hand. Um, you can ask questions or comments within the chat box. We love to hear from everyone, so please feel free to participate. We're, we're really active in the chat. And then one of the most important things is to the right of that icon is the participants icon. This is where you are going to pin your speakers. So you are going to want to click. You can do this as I'm talking. Click the participants button. And you're going to want to click Rebecca Alvord. She'll be speaking today um, as well as Mark Hottenroth. Um, I don't know. He might be speaking for a little bit less time, so um, you can pin and unpin the presenters as they are sort of up, but that will 
ensure that their presentations are full screen. So um, definitely want to make sure you pin Rebecca Alvord so she is full screen. Um, and that I believe is all I have for you all. Um, Rebecca, did I miss anything? Does that sound good for the pinning? Yeah, and I'll share my screen now. Perfect. Thank you so much. We're so excited. So I'm going to let Mark kick us off. Thanks, Becca. So I'm Mark Hottenroth, and I'm I lead the industrial design team at GE Appliances in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, with me, obviously, is Rebecca, and she leads all of the design for the Monogram brand. So a lot of the work that we do is, um, you know, creating beautiful products that look amazing in in our kitchens, especially this, this picture here. Uh, these beautiful wall ovens that Becca designed for this uh, contemporary kitchen. And in the background, you'll see some some beautiful uh, refrigerators also. But in addition to being beautiful, you know, we also do all, a lot of the functionality, try to figure out what people want, get inside their heads. We do a lot of design thinking and co-creation of, of what products that we need to bring to life. And it's something that is is kind of we're passionate as a design team is is thinking about wellness um and how we how we make you know our products beautiful work well but also uh improve everybody's lives and make uh make things better in the world uh so for that let's kick it off so i'm going to start with an idea that um we believe that not only you know making great products that people want to use uh, and love and are delighted with is important and look amazing, but also kind of how they're made is important too. So this idea starts with uh, wellness starts with local. So so the story is really about that I'm going to tell is about our U.S. manufacturing footprint. Um, and going back a little bit, I think the story really starts about probably like 10 to 12 years ago. Um, we at GE made a major investment in bringing a lot of factories to Louisville in our, in our U.S. manufacturing set, sites. We spent, at that time, we invested over a billion dollars and um, to really kind of understand and learn about kind of i guess in many ways relearn how to make products in the u.s you can see all these dots and flags um, in terms of our manufacturing facilities um, our research and development areas uh, local delivery locations experience centers uh, call centers all over across the u.s so we really really invested in U.S. and North America. Uh, even recently, you know, we've we've done quite a bit of investing. I guess you know this kind of shows, in many ways, our commitment. We continue to invest. We're dedicated to making product in the U.S. and making the best product that we possibly can. Um, I think another idea that we'd like to share is. Um, you know, why, why is investing in local manufacturing and local uh, distribution important? And I think a couple reasons. One is benefits to the customer. Uh, for you all, I think in many cases, we've, what we've found is it's really a faster develop, product development from idea, from initial ideation through distribution. When you have your factories, you know, essentially across the street, as we do here in, in Louisville, um, you know, it's even simple things like time zones. Uh, when you're dealing with time zones across, you know, across the ocean, it's things like that become extremely difficult and cumbersome. Uh, when we think about, um, you know, making very high quality products, when we own the factory and we can control the factories, we can really improve our quality, um, essentially, our distribution systems are 
very uh, high tech and the ability to fulfill orders is much, much quicker when we have uh, all of our facilities in, in a in a central location or at least at least in North America. Um, some other ideas. So, for example, yeah, thank you. Uh, some content that we have some some products that I'd like to highlight are uh, French door refrigerators. This shows basically essentially like the number or the percentage of, of US content. And these are parts, factory operations, and, and wages. So they're not 100%, you know, in me most cases, they're not 100% made in the USA. But, um, you know, we like to highlight these percentages this is very high. Uh, most of the componentry that makes up that gray bar is. Um, parts that we are sourced throughout the world for the best quality and the best price. Um, and at the end of the day, like for us, there's a lot of benefit for our customers. There's a lot of benefit for us, you know, the ability to understand how these products are made, um, keep the IP within GE, uh, you know, it, create advanced technologies to make them the best they can be and the best quality. So for us, it's really great. And I think the other part is, you know, from a overall environmental and well-being perspective, just kind of well-being for people. Um, you know, when we have, when we make things in the U S there's a lot lower uh, footprint, environmental footprint, and not only just from transportation, um, uh, just fuel fuel usage, uh, timing. You know, when we make when we make things in the U.S., we don't we don't have to worry about like the ten week uh, time that the, the our products are on a boat. You know, so we can actually be faster, more nimble. Um, and the other things are like for basically from a well being perspective, things like uh, when we uh, we have control of our own factories, we have much more more say in inclusion and diversity. We have much more uh, control over safety. And then what Becca will get into a little bit is the actual environmental uh, impact of our factories themselves. So, you know, in in a nutshell, I think, you know, for us, when we, when we have our factories near us as a design team, um, it really, allows us to create products that you want you know we can get that go from the idea to distribution to fulfillment much much faster uh, we can get the products that you want um where you want them and at the end of the day at the at the time frames that you need them so that's uh that's a little bit about how we think about well-being and our u.s local footprint rebecca yeah, and so um, wellness then continues with how we make them. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about some of the sustainable design and manufacturing practices that we're employing at Monogram. Um, so first, uh, before I dive into a specific product and, and kind of take you on a journey, um, just want to talk about our overall business citizenship and sustainability goals. So um, these are, you know, overall goals for our business. Um, last year, uh, we achieved ISO 14001. Um, so that's a very important certification. It's an international standard that shows that you have a environmental manif environmental manif <laughs> sorry, management system. And um, this is becoming more and more important to customers. Um, you know, customers want to know that the companies that they're working with care about the environment, that they have a plan, um, that they have plans and processes uh, in place to, you know, look at their footprint. Um, so we're very pleased that Appliance Park received that certification. Um, we're also going to be issuing a citizenship report at, in 2020, so the end of this year, and that includes a really robust materiality analysis. And what that is, is it looks at our entire uh, corporate carbon footprint, um, which is, I mean, that's a, 
it's a lot of work to to figure out your entire corporate uh, carbon footprint. But once you start tracking that and you know you know all of those details you're able to set goals and improve upon that year after year um, and something that we have been working on and um, we're still on this journey we're on this journey to zero landfill operations and so um, for example appliance park that's like our main headquarters um, many of our factories are there um, this year we're going to achieve an 80 percent landfill reduction from a 2008 baseline um, so we're not at zero yet but we're on that journey and um, i love working for a company that's on that journey but um, i'm going to take you on a specific uh, appliance uh, journey and just talk about one appliance this is a photo of our column refrigerators in the beautiful Chawa home concept that was showcased at the International Builder Show this year. And Chawa is a Japanese term that um, it, it's all about uh, well-being, sustainability, connectedness with nature. Um, and so we were very pleased to have our monogram appliances in this kitchen. Um, so I'm going to talk to you specifically about these column refrigerators. Uh, there's really four phases that you look at um, for a product's lifetime. There's the design phase, uh, you know, how we think about what that product is going to be and, and um, plan for that product. And then the manufacturing phase, the use phase where it's in a consumer's home, and then the end of life phase, so the disposal or demanufacture. In the design phase, um, some of the things that we're doing um, in 2011, Monogram was the first to introduce the first hydrofluorocarbon free household refrigerator in the US. And that's a big deal because uh, hydrofluorocarbons are very bad for the environment. They have a very high global warming potential. You can see those uh, charts down at the bottom. Um, you know, the refrigerant used to be 1430 and now the global warming potential is three. Uh, even the foaming agents, those had a high global warming potential. And now the, the foaming agent we use is, is practically benign. Um, so we had to work with the EPA to be able to bring this to the US. And now, you know, many other refrigeration companies have been able to follow suit. Um, so I'm just, you know, proud that we were a leader in this in this arena and just really, you know, working to, to bring a, a more eco solution. Um, you guys all know that uh, the light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison and Thomas Edison, of course, founded uh, GE. Well, did you guys know that LED lighting was also invented by GE? So LED lighting was invented in 1962. Um, and it, of course, it's just such a great thing for the environment. It lasts longer. It's highly efficient. There's little waste heat and they contain no harmful toxins like mercury. Um, and so, of course, our refrigeration has you know, beautiful LED lighting on the interior. Um, we also really work hard to minimize any plastics. So the entire interior of this bridge is you know, metal and glass um, because metal and glass is not only beautiful, but it's also uh, more easily recyclable. And then 95% uh, of our packaging can be recycled. Um, that last 5% uh, is you know the tapes and films and we are looking for alternatives uh, you know biodegradable alternatives for that we just don't want to compromise uh, the quality of our product as it's being shipped but we're working on that so we'll, we'll get that we'll get that higher then in the manufacturing phase of the product um, in our monogram refrigeration plant in Selmer Tennessee um, they alone, uh, so that stat there is just for this plant, they recycled 2.3 million pounds of material uh, last year. And, um, you know, they work very hard to minimize any waste because um, it's also just good business too. You know, it's good for the environment. It's also good business. Um, for example, their wooden pallets, they send those to a recycler to chip them up into mulch. Um, they they have there's like a little bit of styrofoam that they're trying to find a place to to recycle um, since they're kind of out in the middle of nowhere um, they're going to utilize they're looking at utilizing the empty trucks that um, 
so they come from Louisville down to Tennessee with parts and they and they right now going back empty. They're going to try to utilize those to to take back that styrofoam to a, um, a recycler uh, up here. And then um, so they're just like constantly looking for ways to just really be able to have no waste. Um, there's also a lot of pallets that they use uh, that uh, we call this closed loop because um, they come from the supplier with parts and, and they're able to be returned to the supplier, broken down and returned to the supplier to be filled back up with parts. Um, they also replaced all their lighting in their factories with LED lighting. Um, I mean, that was a huge reduction in energy consumption um, and less cooling costs. But uh, also, I mean, LED lighting has just such higher lumen output that, you know, it, you also have the benefit of better quality control. Um, and the factory is also a very clean factory. Uh, they basically discharge nothing, but uh, legal made me change this to say minimal emissions because, um, you know, they clean the refrigerator shelves with alcohol and they have to count that. They have to count that smell, you know, kind of like nail um, but they don't have wasted wastewater. You know, they're it's just a very. I was surprised to find majority of the carbon footprint point ninety seven point six percent of the carbon footprint of this of the appliance is driven by its use phase. So that's when it's actually in your home being used, you know, over that 15, 20 years um, that you're using that product. And so that just really drives home that it's so important to have an energy efficient appliance and that, you know, we are constantly working to design the most energy efficient and water efficient appliances. Um, because, you know, we are working on that, what is it like 2.4% uh, you know that that is you know due to the manufacture and design of the product um, but we want to make sure that while it's in a consumer's home that we're minimizing that carbon footprint um, and so you know our column refrigerators are energy star um, you know so a typical fridge would of, of that caliber would be um, $65 to operate in a year and ours is $36. So just trying to, you know, really reduce those, those energy numbers. And then of course you buy a fridge to preserve your food. And so um, we also, of course, design the product to, to really optimize that climate to maintain freshness so that, you know, you're minimizing any food waste. And then at the end of life, um, so Monogram takes away, your, you know, when we deliver a fridge, we take away your old fridge or, you know, whatever appliance, um, no matter what brand. And, and we do that to responsibly recycle those. Um, we are a partner with RAD. It's a responsible appliance uh, disposal, and that's uh, through the EPA. Um, and when you are recycling a product through through RAD, 97% of that appliance is able to be completely recycled. Um, if it, you know, if if an appliance just ends up at like a regular um, dump or uh, or facility, then it just it typically just gets shredded, and they're really only able to pick out the metal um, and glass. They they really don't um, get the plastics or the foams. But when it goes through RAD, um, you're able to even capture that foam. Um, one of our um, partners is so uh, top notch at recycling that they're able to even capture the the foam gas and convert it into salt water. So they're they're like going beyond recycling. They're they're actually um, demanufacturing the product. And you know, we're just continually on this journey to to get more and more of these appliances recycled this way. Um, and so then I just wanted to. So that that's you know kind of the story of the fridge. Um, there was a couple other products that that I just wanted to highlight that were also in this Chawa kitchen um, that also have great stories. Um, so just like really high level, you know, of course the induction cooktop um, induction. Uh, cooking is so much more efficient than gas or electric. Um, the dishwasher uh, dishwasher is very energy uh, energy and water uh, conserving. Um, like really you should never be hand washing you, your dishwasher saves so much water um 
and then the built in cooking products, you know, those are also made with metal and glass and, um, you know, just very easy to, to take apart both for service and, and also demanufacturing at the end of life. And as designers, you know, so we also uh, really think about the overall well-being aspects for that end consumer in the product design. And so I just want to talk a little bit about some of the thoughtful design details that, that you know, we think of and consider um, as we design our product. So um, just talking about our new built-in cooking product line, um, just a couple high-level things of, of things that we think about for well-being. Aesthetics, aesthetics are huge. Um, there's actually studies that show that um, beautiful, minimalist aesthetics produce a calming effect in a person. They can actually track that. And so just, you know, streamlining those aesthetics, designing that product to blend in with the environment can actually produce peace um, and lower your heart rate. Um, also really just taking care that you can you know, very precisely flush install this product with tight reveals. And that, and that just kind of also goes into that, just trying to have everything blend into that environment. Um, we also took great care that the beautiful user interface has um, a, a beautiful food photography um, uh, interaction. So uh, we used a term called, we used a technique called chiaroscuro. And that is a style that artists like Rembrandt would use, where you've got really um, contrast, you've got like pops of contrast on a dark background, and it just really um, offsets that food photography so beautifully. So you can you can think, oh, I have a, I basically have a Rembrandt in my kitchen <laughs> when you look at your wall oven. Um, usability. So uh, we worked very hard to make sure that the controls were the most intuitive controls possible. Um, when we were, our human factors team, when they were doing studies, um, they got this to, they, they worked so that the user interface was able to guide you 20 to 30 times faster to complete a task than our competitors. Um, they also, we also put in precision cooking modes that, that really help you um, uh, help ensure the most perfect food results. So all of this just kind of helps you to have a good experience as you're using a product. Um, we can we definitely consider ergonomics. That's very important. Um, you know, for our new touch to open door, um, you know, just off the top of my head, I was thinking about how we were doing studies of that lift force that it would take to close that door. And, um, you know, we were surprised that a competitor had such a heavy door that, I mean, that was so outside of our usability guidelines. Um, Monogram is actually the only certified appliance manufacturer that is certified by Living in Place Institute. So that's, that's all about universal design. Um, so we take ergonomics very seriously, you know, like slide out racks that are very easy to, to access. Um, our wall oven is going to be the first to launch with a voice open voice to open door. Um, we were the first in the industry to launch a suite of voice activated cooking products, and they are still voice activated. You can speak to Alexa um, and activate your cooking products. But um, we're actually going to be the first to launch a voice to open door. So just picture your hands being full and you can just talk to your oven to not only set the set the program, but also open your door and then place your food in. Um, and then remote connected is important because it gives you peace of mind. You can monitor what's going on um, inside and outside your home, wherever. And then just some other uh, great, you know, usability things that that we consider on other products. Um, just to touch on very quickly, uh, third racks and dishwasher. So elevating that silverware um, so it's easier to, to access. Uh, this design, um, we worked hard in research. We, we noticed that people, when they were standing at their sink, so, so you know, you always you typically put a dishwasher next to a sink and we noticed that depending on what side of the sink that uh, a person had installed the dishwasher, that's where they turned to load and that that um, also affected how they grasped the silverware. So uh, we made this adjustable so that you could, you know, depending on what side of the dishwasher you 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 
what side of the sink you located your dishwasher, you were able, you were able to swap out your silverware basket so, so that you could have the most ergonomic loading angle for your silverware. Um, uh, another cool thing with the dishwasher, LED lighting on the interior. Um, if you have never had a dishwasher with lighting on the interior, um, it makes such a huge difference. Um, you can actually see everything. You can you can see that your 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 dishes are clean. Um, it's just very pleasing when you open the door and it's completely lit on the interior. Um, also, making sure that you know it actually dries the dishes. Um, that was a huge consumer pain point that you know dishes needed to be needed to be clean and dry um and then you know our advantium has a great usability story uh in terms of flexibility so uh it's a five in one oven that uh, gives you a convection oven toaster oven warming proofing oven and, pre and precision cook oven and microwave and a very small compact space so these are just kind of some high level ways that we as designers consider well-being ergonomics, aesthetics, usability um, as we design the product. So making it flexible, making it easy to access, easy to use, um, all of these are all things that we're considering. And really that's um, all that I have, but I, but Mark and I would love to take some questions. Um, and I guess I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see the chat window. So are there any questions that anyone has? Anything you want to know about uh, client monogram of client? <laughs> it looks like there is one question in the chat. Hold on, sorry, my chat's freezing, of course. There it is. Does anyone design specifically with wellness or sustainability in mind? Oh, sorry. That was Elise was asking that to the to the group, not to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, why don't you guys talk a little bit about um, any you know any concepts or anything that we're thinking about um, here at Monogram? I, I don't know if there's anything that you guys can share, um, and or what are you guys seeing in regards to wellness and in, in appliances? Well, I, I mean, I, I just know that wellness is so important, especially now during uh, COVID. Um, you know, I think consumers are even more uh, mindful of wellness. And I mean, that's like mental, physical, um, health re health related. Uh, I know Mark and I were just on a call yesterday where we're working with an awesome designer uh, to design our, our KBiz booth. And the, the whole theme is gonna be wellness, <laughs> really um health and wellness um because i mean in the luxury space i mean that is so top of mind to the luxury consumer right now i don't know mark like i don't know what i can share but <laughs> well we were talking about a couple different themes and a couple different trends well health health and well-being being one um sustainability being another that's continues to gain um you know mind share and I think the, and the third was inclusion and diversity, you know, and it's interesting to think about those kind of three themes as it applies to design and how you can, I mean, some of them, the, some of those, the, the strings are through, you know, through lines are a lot easier to imagine than, than others. But I think um, it's all important right now. It's all the things that are going on kind of right now in the zeitgeist. Um, and so it's things that as designers, you know, we take in all of this information going on in the world and, and kind of start triangulating, you know, new ideas and, a, and an idea comes forth. I think, you know, and lots of times, whatever for me as a creative, like whatever my inputs are, whatever I'm thinking about that translates into the output. So. If we're, con if we're thinking about those type of things and constantly surrounding ourselves with things like inclusion, diversity, and sustainability, 
and health and well-being. It's just natural that the output, our creative um, output, will be more focused on that. Uh, same with uh, thinking about design for the aging population and creating, you know, opportunities for us to be empathetic and understand and walk in the shoes. Um, we do things like empathy sessions where, you know, we try to to uh, simulate certain uh, issues that, long, that go along with aging. And then, you know, it may not be a linear thing, like you might not be able to say, okay, well, you did this and it ends up here because it's usually kind of fuzzy in the middle, you know. Um, but typically whatever we it influences us or our inputs will affect uh, the creative process. I don't know if anybody else wants to share anything, any of their experiences like that, uh, or if, if you agree. Yeah, and I'll just say this is Alex with Monogram. I was just on a call with Food and Wine Magazine and Departures Magazine, and they were just sharing some insights in the industry as well. And one of the things that they shared, which a lot of us know, but I thought this was interesting on top of it, is, you know, our homes are more important than ever right now. And really, it's important that the affluent homeowners are placing greater, you know, they're placing greater importance on their homes more than ever before, describing their homes now as a place of comfort, sanctuary and security. And they shared a couple statistics that I would love to share with you guys. 36% consider their home more important to them now than prior to COVID. Um, stay at home orders have made this an ideal time for home projects. So 43% are working on ways to reorganize their home. Um, and then 40% have renovation improvement projects planned for the second half of this year. So that was just some positive, you know, insight into the industry and that people are going to continue to move forward with the plans that they had um, prior to COVID. That makes sense. Yeah. I know I feel that. <laughs> Hey, um, um, Mark, one of the things that, uh, and this is Sherry. I hey, wanted Sherry. To th Hi, guys. Um, one of the things I wanted to add, because a lot of people aren't aware of the Living in Place Institute, mm -hmm. um, and they are the, they have also partnered with NKBA. And so basically their, their entire kind of mantra is about well-being and safety and comfort in the home. It's a compilation of those things. To that end, we are actually the only appliance manufacturer in the world that has products that have been specifically certified by them. They're kind of like the FDA is in the food world. They are in this world. And so we have many products, ovens, some of our ovens, refrigeration, cooktops, um, have all been certified by them for, from an accessibility standpoint and a safety and comfort standpoint. So I, I wanted to just bring that out because I think that's a big honor for us. But more importantly, I think it speaks volumes to who we are as a company. And it kind of dovetails with what you guys were saying earlier in your slides. These things are important to us because we we care about our customers and our designers customers and trying to help them live their lives more comfortably and more accessible. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there because I, I think I'm, I'm very proud of that honor um, in the monogram world as well. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, that's uh, really important. I think, you know, as design as a designer, you know, we're basically we've gotten into this job because we love helping people, you know, and making things better in the world. So that's uh, wonderful to hear that that we're making great progress. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard. All all of these products, like, I mean, have, you know, because, like, you know, a product takes, like, a, you know, a year or two to develop, to design and develop and create. So, I mean, we have these rich stories about, you know, consumer research, observations we had um, for each product. And it, it's hard to condense everything down, just a couple bullet points to share. But, um, yeah, Mark and I are both nerds when it comes to, uh, consumer research and uh, you know figuring out how to solve pain points. So, wish I could share more. <laughs> Becca, are y'all seeing anything? Um, well, let me back up. I feel like um, I'm seeing a big trend in 
like outdoor gardens and herbs and whatnot. Is that a trend that y'all have seen as well in this in the luxury space or has it come and gone and people kind of like doing it on their own in their backyards? I don't know if you could speak anything to that. I, I mean, so that's, it's kind of like, um, I think the term is biophilia. So bringing the outdoors in, is that what you're, you're talking to or specifically herbs? You... Um, yeah, I think it's both kind of a general category. I know in the last few months I've seen a lot of people building their own herb gardens or there's a lot of countertop appliances to yeah. uh, indoor microgreens and herb gardens. And so I don't know if that's a trend that y'all continue to see or if you think it's more oh, contemporary. Or no, more absolutely. Uh, so Mark, are, are we able to talk about? Well, I'll tell you one thing. We at CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show, we we participate that as a GE company, and we created an entire concept kitchen. We called it Homegrown, and it was the entire uh, kitchen was based on, you know, making, growing your own food, and then disposing of it and using the the the, the waste to to basically make uh, compost to grow new food. So it was kind of a closed loop uh, kitchen system. Now. We did that because we took look took a look at a lot of trends, a lot of macro trends, a lot of things that are going on in the world, and kind of well, lots of times what we'll do is we'll create these scenarios um, to kind of predict the future or just show where we think the future is going. And we do that for many reasons. One is to help us understand what's going on in the world. Two is to you know basically get feedback from you know, people that attend the shows and media and we get, um, you know, we get published and we get, we can get feedback from whether or not it's a good, a good idea. It's kind of like the concept cars that uh, Detroit shows at the, at the auto show. And, you know, from that, we learned that there was actually quite a bit of an excitement, you know. Uh, but what we also learned is that the concepts only go so far. Really what people want to talk about is what they can buy or, what they can soon buy. So I'll just tell you that I think that's, we did get a lot of feedback and a lot of positive reaction to the idea of creating products that um, help people grow food and dispose of food. And, um, you know, again, bringing, bringing the indoor gardens or green gardens and bio, biophilia in. But that's, that's pretty much all I can really share at this point is that it is a growing trend and there is um, you know, we see a market need out there. No, oh, thank you. And then one more question as well. Who do y'all look at from like a, um, like, I don't know if there's another industry or another brand that y'all look to for trends in wellness and sustainability? Are there different um, industries? Yeah, when we look uh, cross industry, we look in inside our industry. So, you know, um, different trade shows like KBiz um, or Eurek China, but we also look outside of our industry. So what's going on in fashion, automotive, um, housewares, furniture, um, technology, like Mark mentioned, CES, um, services, what's going on in restaurant design, um, food trends, um, yeah, but in all of those, I can tell you that that bubbling up, there's just a lot of interest in wellness, sustainability, and then diversion and uh, diversity and inclusion. I made a new word, um, but that's that's just bubbling up constantly when we're mm -hmm. looking at all of these trends acro across industries. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see too with everything that's happened in 2020, if that even grows more rapidly from like an interest and a, a trend perspective as well. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it doesn't look like there's any other questions at the moment. I don't know if you guys have any last minute comments or anything that you'd like to share or add with the group. Um, and if not, we'll give people back a few minutes of their time. 
Uh, I just have one comment, which is, you know, anybody that wants to share uh, ideas or feedback with us, with Rebecca or I, that we were happy to hear any kind of feedback that you have. I mean, it's important for us to be continually looking and finding ways to do things better, design products better, experiences better. So anything you'd like to share, um, we're welcome to hear. Yeah, I love that. Okay, well, the people on the call definitely have our email address. So anyone, again, like Mark said, that wants to share feedback with us as we're always trying to be better and do better, um, please share with us and you know we can take it back to the team and see what we can create from that. That'd be great. Thank you. So thank you everyone for your time today. Um, hopefully you'll join us tomorrow. We do have Jean Stouffer joining us from Michigan um, to talk with Chef John. So it should be another great conversation. And then lastly, we'll send out our reminder email at the end of the week on Friday with links to everything. Um, and then you know where to find us. We're truly here to be a resource for you. So anything that we can help with, um, anything that we can support you on, please shoot us an email. And thank you everyone for your time today. Thank Thanks, you. guys. See you.